Welcome to Aerospace Engineering. Today we're going to talk about how we can 3D print a wing shape using Onshape as our CAD program. So first to get to this module you're going to want to navigate uh, in Canvas over here to your module. And you're going to see there's two tabs here. There's an Assignment tab and a Resources tab. Uh, on the Assignment tab this is essentially a PDF file. You can download it and read it or you can scroll through it. If you're tabbing between screens, I, I know it's kind of hard, uh, but that's also why you're watching this video to help you out. But anyway, what I want you to do is I want you to navigate to the Resources tab over here. And on the Resources tab, what you're going to find is you're going to find the activity itself, a PDF of the activity. Uh, you'll find some data files that we don't use in Onshape, but we do use in SOLIDWORKS. But what we're going to look at are these pictures. So these pictures are scaled diagrams, and what they're scaled is for a chord length of 100 millimeters. So you'll see that right there. So that's important because we're going to use these to trace a shape. And I'm going to walk you through, I'll just choose this first one, how we're going to do that. So again, we're on the Activity 1.27, Airfoil Construction, on shape Resources button. Now I'm going to choose my wing profile. Now as I mentioned in class, there's 17 profiles here. You can use any one of the 17 profiles. Uh, these come from uh, basically a, a uh, wing profile database and I've just downloaded them and put them here for your convenience. Uh, I'll choose this first profile, 01. The only one that I'm going to tell you that doesn't work very well for 3D printing is this one right here, the Eiffel 10, which happens to be the wing off of the right flyer. Uh, it just doesn't print well. It doesn't hold up well in the wind tunnel. So don't use that one. There's not enough beef to that. So don't use number 14. So I'm going to choose this first one right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on my uh, my image here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to save that image. And I want to save that image to some location where I can find it. Now you'll see I've already done this. It's on my desktop right here. So I've downloaded and saved that image. Now what we want to do is we want to basically go into Onshape here. And in Onshape I want to open up a new document. So start your on shape. You'll have to log into your account. And get rolling here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go create a document. And I'm going to give this a name. And to keep them straight when you submit them to me, please use your last name. So I'll use my last name. And then I'm just going to call it my wing because that's what it is. Now in this document, when it first opens up, the first thing I want to do is I want to come up here to the three bars and I want to set my workspace units to millimeters. This will make my life a lot simpler. Now if you mess this up and you give me an STL file that's all whacked out, we're not going to be able to 3D print it. So you've got to be millimeters here and I'll show you another place where you've got to be millimeters. So now I've got my uh, file started. I'm going to start a sketch and I want to choose the front plane. Now to view normal to it, hit the N key and it'll rotate it. Now the first thing I want to do is bring that image in that I saved. So here it is. So what I want to do is click on the down arrow here and select insert image. Now you'll see there are no image files available yet in this uh, document, but I do want to import my image. So click on import. Once I click on import, I'm going to navigate to the location where my image is. Mine happens to be on my desktop. doesn't really matter what the name of it is. And now click open. Now it's going to upload the image and now it's visible right here. So it put the image into my document. It's also visible down here. I'm going to select this image, click on it, and now I've got this cursor, action cursor, and I just want to draw out a rectangle. It'll stay proportional as I draw my rectangle. So I've drawn my rectangle, and if I zoom in, I can see my wing shape. Now what I want to do is I want to make this image scale it to 100 millimeters. So the closest I can get here is really just scaling the overall image. Uh, I can do this and scale the image. So I'm just going to choose 
this is what I'd recommend you do. I'm just going to choose the upper size of the box here, and I want to make that 100. And I'll type in millimeters. So I'm at 100 millimeters. Now, really what I wanted to do is I wanted to have it 100 millimeters across here. But we'll, we'll, we'll stick with this for now. Now I want to drag my image around. So I'm going to get out of my dimension tool. I can hit D again. And I'm going to drag this bad boy down. And I want to kind of put it so that this leading edge right here or the beginning of my cord line is at the origin. Now that's important because if you accidentally drag it later on, it will make it a lot easier to fix. So I've got an image in here. It's about 100 millimeters. We're not going to get too worried. You're off by maybe three or four millimeters here on this edge of the diagram. But we're pretty close. First thing I want to do is put a line in that represents my cord line. So my cord line is from this point at the leading edge, and it's this blue line. Now, it's going to be in a different location for each wing, but you'll see mine just goes straight across. It should be horizontal. So I'm going to go ahead and do that cord line, and I want to make that construction geometry. So I'm going to hit L, or I could click on my line tool here. Either one. I'll hit L. I also want to select construction geometry, or I can select Q. Those two are highlighted. Now I'm going to start at the origin, and I'm just going to click once, release, zoom in a little bit, and click to the very trailing edge, and drop it. Now, just for curiosity, I want to see how close I am in dimensions. So I'm going to see what the size of this line is. It should be 100. Yeah, I'm 3 millimeters off, so we're not going to worry about that. Okay, I've got a line that represents my cord line, which I'll need later on. And now what I want to do is draw a line using my spline tool right up here. So if you hover over it, it'll give you instructions. You want to choose a start point and then click enough points to go around the curve. So I'm going to choose my spline tool. And I'm going to start at the very back at the end of this line, because that's the end of my line for the wing. And I'm just going to start to click. So I drop once, click second time. And you'll notice that the more lines I put in here, the more refined I can make my line. Now, if I don't click and I just zoom in and out, you can see I can navigate around my, my wing shape. Now, as it gets relatively smooth, I can space my lines out. But our goal is to get somewhere around, uh, I'm going to say somewhere between uh, 50 and 75 different coordinate points as you go through it. It doesn't have to be perfect. But it should be reasonably close to the overall shape. The more you zoom in, the easier it is to follow your line, your contour. You'll notice I zoom in and out wherever my cursor is, so that takes a little bit of practice to get used to. You're going to need to use a mouse, too, if you're using your fingers on your trackpad. Uh, not going to be very successful with this. So if you're at home doing this, get your hands on a mouse. If you're in class, I'll loan you a mouse for your laptop, or bring a mouse. Now you'll see the spline as I move this around, it affects the curve behind it, for the points behind it. And for that reason, as we come closer into the end, and the curve gets tighter, I will end up putting more points in. So here I don't really want to click on the construction geometry, that chord line, if I can help it, because that starts to give me some wacky inputs. I want all of these things to free float. So I'm going to zoom right back in, and here's what I'm going to show you. So as we start to get tighter and tighter on this radius, I need to pick up the pace of the clicks. So they get smaller and smaller and smaller. And you'll see I get a little wackiness there at the front. But I'll fix that here in just a second. And we'll keep going back to the back. Yeah, 
You'll notice I put my cursor off to the side when I want to zoom out. I don't know how many of those I how many points I have. I'm gonna say I probably got in the 50 range. Now as I come right back down in here, this is where I want to be sure and connect those two dots. Okay. I want to connect those two dots. Okay, now I'm going to just go through and look at my entire shape here. Now I'm using my mouse wheel to scroll in and out. And you'll see I got a little funkiness right here. If I go and show constraints, I've got that vertical constraint there. I'm going to delete that off. And then I can pull this point around here a little bit more if I want to. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Now if I want to edit a specific point, I can choose spline point and then I can add an extra point in here. And it looks like I probably got to add an extra point or two. Uh, and I probably got to add one here. And I can pull that point in or out however I want to do it. I've got to get out of my add points, but now I can move that point around. And I'm going to pull that line in there. This one I'm going to pull down a little bit. So you can see you can go in after the fact and fix it. So I'm basically just smoothing out my curves. Now, in the big picture, these moves that I'm making are, are sub-millimeter moves. Uh, you're not going to notice it too much. You'll notice it if it's a giant deviation from the line. But these are not giant deviations. These are small. So I'm just fine-tuning it. So get it as good as you're, you want when you're happy with it. You'll submit it, and I'll take a look, and I'll tell you if you're way off. Try and stay on the line, or pretty darn close to it, so you get an accurate representation. So there's my wing. So I've got my sketch done, and I'm all set. And I'm going to go ahead and go straight into extruding it. So I click on the Extrude button right here. And in this, uh, I've got a solid body. If I don't have a solid body, it means it wasn't closed. So I'm going to choose, instead of blind, symmetric, which will extrude it out both directions. And I want 100 millimeters. That's as big as will fit in our, in our wind tunnel. And then just hit the check mark. Now once you do that, you've got a wing shape. Now the wing physically sits in the wind tunnel, and the wind is blowing across it in this direction. So in order for us to be able to mount it, uh, it doesn't really matter, but I just say put it on the front face here. We're going to make another sketch. So I'm going to go into this front face here, and I'm going to click on a sketch, and then click on the front face. Again, hit the N key to go normal to it. Now what I want to do here is I want to put a reference rectangle that is approximately midway on the, on the wing so that we can mount the wing with the reference line, the chord line, parallel to the indicator on the wind tunnel. So I need to turn on this first sketch. See how it disappeared? If I hover over it and I click on this eyeball right here, that sketch will appear. Now the reason I want to do that is I want to be able to see this chord line. Now this chord line is straight horizontal, and I believe all of them are. So I'm going to come in here and choose a rectangle. And I'll choose a center rectangle. You can also hit R. And I'm just going to come somewhere in the middle, click once, drop, pull it out, click a second time. I'm going to dimension this thing, either with the dimension tool or hitting the letter D. And I want to dimension about 3 millimeters. If you make it smaller than 3 millimeters, it won't work. And about 15 millimeters, somewhere around there. 15, 20. Ah, you know what? Let's make it 20. And now I'm going to give a dimension from the front edge here, and I'm just going to choose this plane out. And I'm going to put it about 40 millimeters back for this wing. So it's about in the middle. Similar, I'm going to go from the plane with that reference line up, and I'll put it about 10 millimeters. Now that's fully defined. So this is going to be a cutout that we're going to make in the wing so that we can place it in the wind tunnel with a reference for the chord line so we can get our angle of attack accurate. Now the second thing is all these wings look alike. So let's come up here and click on the text icon. We'll use the text icon and I'm going to just trace a box big enough for me to read, not so big that it's crazy. Once I trace that box I can put my text in here and I'm just going to put my last name and it will size to the size of the box when I hit the check mark. 
lo and behold, there it is. Now I can maneuver this around and move it and get it so that it's not going to be too close to the wing edge. You want to have it somewhere in the middle. You don't need to do anything to dimension it. Just place it. Now similarly, we're going to cut these. That's another extrusion. So we click on the Extrude button, and because I've got the sketch selected, it selects everything in the sketch. Now I want to go blind, and I want to go about 3 millimeters. Don't go crazy, deep, or you'll have a hard time with the print. And I am going to do a Remove right here. That cuts it. Now roll your part over to the side, and you can see the direction. I can change directions. If I go in a direction where there's nothing to cut, it's going to turn it red. So you'll see that. So there I've got my cut. Hit the check mark. All right, I've got a wing. Now I'm going to come back here. Oops, I accidentally exited my wing. There we go. I got back in my wing. So you see it saves it automatically, which is kind of neat. I'm going to go back and turn off the sketch. Sketch 1. Click the eyeball. And now what I need to do is put it into a format. So you'll want to share it. The other thing that you're going to want to do, share with me, hit the blue share button. The other thing that you're going to want to do is look at the shape. Be sure it's about what you expected. It's twice I've closed that. And be sure that it's about what you expected. And now what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and export this. To export the wing, down here where it says Part 1, right-click. And right here, you're going to choose Export. Now, all of this is in the instructions. The file name, again, I want your last name, Saxon, and Wing. Put it in a .stl, because we're going to learn how to slice that here in just a minute. Binary, units should be millimeter. Resolution should be fine, and then click Download. And I'm going to give this a slightly different name because I've got another one in there already. Slightly Wing A. Okay, select Save File. Your dialog box will depend on your browser that you use, but it doesn't really matter. You just want to be able to save it. And mine happens to go up here into Downloads. And you'll see that I actually have my Wing right there. This is the file that I'm going to submit for this module. You're going to submit your STL file. I also want you to share your Onshape part so that I can look at it. That's all there is to doing this. If you've done it right, you'll end up with a wing. Uh, next up, we'll learn how to 3D print that in class uh, with a quick demonstration. Thanks for watching.